It's time for Side Scrollers with me, Stuttering Craig. You decide what you lose, not other people. And blast. I like pickles. And co-hosted by our friends from around the internet. You like common sense? Hit that thumbs up button and of course the subscribe button and join us Monday through Friday live at 11 a.m. Central Time. And now, broadcasting from our homes, it's time for the number one gaming and entertainment podcast on God's green earth. It's time for Side Scrollers. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, welcome on out to Side Scrollers on YouTube.com and Rumble.com and Side Scrollers, not Locals.com. What's going on, everybody? Hi. Happy Leap Year, February 29th. It is a Thursday. Good to see everybody. Hope you're having a great day. You're ready for the weekend? One day away. Hello, Blabs. How are you? Hi. You know, I'm not even doing anything special for Leap Year. I should, shouldn't I? You're doing the show. That's special enough. Yeah, but like I'm saying, something completely different that you normally wouldn't do. Oh, I got something for you in just a little bit. Tell you what, it is It is a wonderful, wonderful day. It is yeah. something that happens once every four years. Including having our guest on, who maybe the next time we see him is in four years. It's the one, the only, inflappable. I don't even know if that's a word. What? Drunk 3PO. What? How are you, buddy? Unflappable? Yeah, I don't know. I thought he said something else. <laughs> Un Unflappable. Jay. Drunk. Oh, what's good, everybody? My four-year appearance. That's leap year. Right. Every leap, right? leap year. In I just know it means I got an extra day not to pay the rent. So. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, buddy. Happy. Can we schedule you for. Uh... For the next four years. <laughs> I'm still alive, man. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> man, now you're talking like Camelot. Camelot's like, man, I don't know. I'm not going to. Oh, it's just because I travel a lot, man. So you never know what's going to happen. He's going to get stuck uh, in Cambodia. Look, look. Yeah. Can, can we I've been to Cambodia down? multiple times. Terrible, we, crazy place. Can we lock you down for February 29th, 2028? <laughs> yeah, lock me in. <laughs> lock me. You heard it. Lock it in. Someone in the chest is Jay finally took off the Santa hat. Gosh. <laughs> I still have it, though. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Pop it on. Let's go. Mm. Oh, man. It's, it's, a, it's in the uh, Christmas box. You don't have a Christmas box? Everybody's got a Christmas box. You take you all the like Christmas stuff down. You, yeah. Put it in a box. In mm -hmm. That hat is in the box. Also with my Christmas t-shirts and hoodie. They're all in that box. Labeled Christmas. Comes out November 1st. So. Oh, okay. okay. November goes 1st. back in about January 6th. Yeah, Florida celebrates Christmas November 1st. Yeah, till about January 3rd. Okay. And then we kind of take a pause for Thanksgiving. So. Right. Right. You know. Yeah, isn't that kind of weird how how there is that initial like three week burst of like okay it's Christmas season hold on now it's Thanksgiving yeah back to Christmas let's go I've That's never done that it. commercial I try to make done more stuff money for like in December yeah it's crazy well anyways look we got a great show today I'm beyond excited to have everybody here including you Jay let's go uh, it's been months since you've been on yeah and, and it's not that it's been uh because like I think. When you when I when we were trying to schedule me on, I was on another show, and it's like, and then I go live, mm -hmm. so yeah. I pushed back my live stream today just to be here with you, good fine people. So just well, a little uh, humble brag about himself. That's fine. We're, we're, we're gonna make <laughs> so this. I'm gonna try to send your audience over so I can <laughs> have somebody watch me over there. Hey, everyone, gonna go watch high tea today? Yeah, yeah two o'clock. Two o'clock central or eastern? Uh, eastern. Right okay. after the show, two o'clock. So then, listen. We will raid. I don't know. I don't. I, I'm pretty sure you can raid on YouTube. <laughs> we will YouTube. raid. We don't know how don't to raid. Know how to do it either. <laughs> but we'll put a link down. Yeah, YouTube. Just a not shout out is you. fine, brother. That's we're good. We're gonna talk about psychopathic women. Oh, with that said, here's Vlad, everybody. <laughs> there, there she is. <laughs> there she is, everybody. Um, <laughs> well, look. I want to remind everybody. In addition to going and watching high tea today. Um, we are live over at rumble.com slash side scrollers. Join us over there. Hit the follow button. It's outstanding. We also have an X account where you could have found out that Jay was going to be on the show today. All you have to do is hit the follow button over on X. It's great. You got clips of the show and everything. 
there's a lot of videos that hit X before they even hit YouTube, if they ever even hit mm. YouTube. So you guys got to go over there and watch uh, watch on X, which is great. We also have an Instagram account, don't we, Blabs? We do, and you should follow us there for memes and clips and whatnot, or else, well, nothing really. I'll just be very upset with you, and you'll get a nice little scolding. Way to just peter out there a little bit. Just, well, well, I don't you, know. Well, you know what? You're always like, don't give them wedgies, don't be violent, so I got nothing for them anymore. No, I encourage violence. You told me not to give them wedgies. That can be a form of violence. Oh, get, what are you, six? Come, no. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Come on, Blabs. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> Uh, we also have a Kick account. You can find us over at kick.com slash side scrollers. Also, if you want to listen to the show, you can find us over on Spotify. You can uh, mm -hmm. listen to us instead of staring Yeet. at our stupid faces, which is great. Um, but here's the thing. It is leap year today. And we do have this new locals page at side scrollers.locals.com. Our goal every day, 10 of you to go over there and sign up. It's free. But with it being leap year today, a lot of so I've had I've had a couple people ask about leap year and billing. I don't know. I don't know what the situation is. So if you were to go over to Locals today, or even here on YouTube and become members, there may there's a possibility, I don't know how big, that you could potentially next be billed February 29th, 2028, when Jay comes on again. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know. So today would be a great opportunity to head over to sidescrollers.locals.com <laughs> and become a member, do the annual cycle, so that way, maybe you you get four years of fun for one year. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm just playing, but just trying to figure it all out. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, that's cool. Hit the subscribe button over here on YouTube. Join the 67,400 Common Sense Lavas. You're going to pass me real soon. That's, that's going to be awesome. Well, not now because we're going to send everybody over and uh, we're going to get a bunch of subscribers. Uh, YouTube hasn't really been my... I mean, I love Drunk 3PO, the Drunk 3PO channel, but I need to put more time into it. That's a problem. Waiting for that AI delivery, baby. Make it make yeah, it'll be nice and easy. So, <laughs> oh, you know. That's good. Well, uh, hit the uh, subscribe button. Let's get to our 500 like goal today. We were on a great little streak of that. Ever since we upped it to 500, we haven't missed a day, which is great. Also, our goal is 25 memberships every single day, and we are off to a rip roaring start mm. as the worthy one mm. has come in with 10 gifted memberships hey jay as our guest you get to decide what color today's sticky is today which color would you like uh, to go on the wall i'm gonna go with purple oh he's man. a lavender fella yeah lavender it smells relaxing. nice yeah just kind of makes you feel nice when you see purple. Yeah, it's like, you know, it reminds me of like uh, that dinosaur that used to tell me he loved me when I was a Barney? kid when nobody else would. So, Barney, yeah, it's good memories. Who was like, wasn't Barney like the guy playing inside the suit convicted of a whole bunch of horrible things? <laughs> don't don't ruin my childhood, man. Look at it, the worthy one. <laughs> it's I'm the only saying. time I felt love as a kid, okay? That, you know, mm, should not be <laughs> saying those things after I just said what I just said. <laughs> We got some serious uh, daddy issues going yeah, on here yeah. with Jay today. I'll tell you what. My hey, the worthy one. Strict. Uh, <laughs> anyway. strict. Strict dads create strong men like yeah, you, Jay. Yeah. I love him. He's right. a good guy. Hey, give it up for the worthy one once again with 10 gifted memberships. That is spectacular. Nice. Uh, if you guys get a gifted membership, make sure you say thank you. Um, and Tomok yeah. has Look come in. Tomok. Do you know, Jay, that whenever somebody donates uh, $100 or Super Chats $100, that uh usually it's blabs who has to sing but uh oh. the requests have been coming my way recently because i put my full effort into it excuse you my indian accent of amish paradise yesterday was phenomenal ripple loved it mm -hmm. tomok says craig could you sing the only thing i know for real as <laughs> Dan <Vast>? Dan <laughs> well let me turn is... my headphones down a little bit <laughs> what is just the only Lourdes. thing I know for real? Okay, I need well, I don't to. I don't even know what that is. I, I, the only thing I know for real. Let's see with lyrics. Let's find out what this is because I I have no idea what this is. Oh, this is from Metal Gear. Of oh, course. okay, okay, okay. Sounds good. All right, we'll we'll uh, we'll get to this in a little bit. It's, oh, it's very heavy metal too. Woo. All right, Tomok, we'll get to that in just a little bit. Thank you very much for uh, for your support. Um, and getting the show kicked off on a great start today. Uh, Xander came and says, Jay, when I worked for Babylon B, we were gonna interview Gina C, but the right, but the mm. night right before she interviewed, she got canned. So it never happened. Sad. Oh. 
Yeah. You should reach out again. Maybe she'll she'll uh, grant that interview. Well, Xander doesn't work for the Babylon Bee anymore, so. Well, never mind. Well, uh, yeah, she can come on here and talk to us. <laughs> She was on uh, PBC yesterday. Uh, PB, is that right? PBC podcast? Yeah. Public, uh, she was on yeah. Geeks and Gamers Daily, too. Um, oh. Awesome. So, that's great. Yeah, yeah, studs. I don't know. Uh, someone had a connection. I don't know how that works. It's amazing how that works out. Uh, the worthy one gave in since Blabs was right. Don't eat the cheese. Don't Jay, do it, Craig. What's um, Jay's opinion on the cheese? Jay, have you heard about this? The KFC cheese? <laughs> What's going on over there? Hang on. Sorry, I had to change my headphones. So I couldn't hear for like eight seconds. <laughs> Jay, These things get heard? a little hot, man. The worst thing in the world is have sweaty ear. Yeah, wants, that's why I don't wear headphones. Wants sweaty wear ear. Craig sweaty. loves that sweaty ear, man. Like I don't know what it is. I guess He's it just can. feels nice dripping in the ear hole. But uh, yeah. Did you ask me a question? Is that what yeah, I, I did? Yeah, actually. I did. Yes. Yeah. I did. I was like, what do you think of cheese? And you're like, cheese? What? <laughs> cheese. It's literally like chicken, freaking fried chicken with pizza all together. It looks disgusting. Have you heard of the cheese? It's the uh, new KFC thing. It's... I need it. Me too. I, I, I don't know. Like, Blabs is, <laughs> my, is very against this. It's a piece of fried chicken. My disappointment is immeasurable. My day is ruined, Jay. Thank you. All right. I need it. I'm just trying to get the shadow out from my eyes, like on the lighting. I should have done this before. I'm all unprofessional. Sorry. You look great. Looking great. Looking great, Jay. Yeah, We're thanks. not professionals here, Jay. <laughs> hey, well, maybe, maybe on Friday, uh, maybe tomorrow, I'll do the cheese. I'll do a cheese review no. exclusively for locals. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Uh, Xander came back and says, Jay, any chance you will take a chance again? Is he like ABBA? Take a chance, take a chance, take a chance. <laughs> I don't know. Are you talking about like my D and D days? Like uh, that was the name of my character, but maybe not. We'll maybe. see. These are great questions that I don't know. I don't know. RL Dog says, "Jay, when are you gonna have Craig on? Uh, <laughs> when are you gonna Craig on? Is a former <laughs> professional athlete, not high T. I had Craig on, but I I think we do high T during side scrollers. We we would have to push it back. I'd love to have him on talk. Uh, uh to he played volleyball basketball something like that on trampolines i, I have i have breaking news about slam ball i have the inside in about slam <laughs> I ball actually. Watch that. probably watched you <laughs> didn't even know who you were uh but hey anytime you want me on high t i'll be there and then like there. our friends try to reenact it and thank god no one was filming back in those days so yeah. a lot of a lot of uh <laughs> <laughs> lots of, there's some good stuff man good stuff Jay, there is high t right after the show Right we're, gonna, after the we're, show. we're sending everybody to high tea after the show. Everybody. Everybody. Hey, You're Blabs, not. read it read it out. <clears throat> Blabs the Tower Tart for five dollars. Craig <laughs> should start doing pirate podcast on the old platform so he become the number one pirate stream on the platform. I like pickles. Yay. Thank you, Blabs the Tower Tart. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. That's wonderful. All right. I'm uh, glad I, I'm glad to know that you've accepted that role because this account shows up in my and I'm like oh, yeah. what? I was like, why Adam, are you mean to blab like that? Now Adam I know it's all good. It. He did. And now oh, we even have Dean Cain saying Blabs, go back to your tower. Like <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty That's good. Awesome. That's great. What does the pickle thing mean? Help me out here. Did I miss I just I, listen, I said I like pickles once and it just exploded and now everyone calls me like the pickle lady and I'm like I I, I, I like, like pickles. pickles a fair amount. It's not like Yeah. I eat pickles every day. You know. Got it. There was a uh, back in the day, and this is just really crazy that a coincidence. Back in the day, I had this brand called Game Attack, and uh, the highest donator of the day was called the Big Pickle because they would like slap their pickle out on the table and show everybody. That was kind of like a, a euphemism for dick, right? So maybe we should bring back uh, the Big Pickle here on Side Scroller. So dick. They, right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Michelle Obama's brother. Or, or maybe, That's what? Obama's brother, not oh. Michelle. Oh. Okay. I mean, that Thank could be Michael. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we should bring back the big pickle here on side scrollers and see how Thank that goes. God. You know, it makes makes a lot of sense. Right now, Tomok would be the big pickle with a hundred dollar super chat. Um, yo, Pop says Blabs, the voice of a dorky angel. Look if you like mosquitoes, sure. Mosquitoes. Uh, blue Blue Shell says never change, Jay. We love you and can't wait. <laughs> For Acromatic Chronicles Green, uh, coming soon. Like it's, uh, it was supposed to launch February, but um, pushed it back a few months. Just making sure my artist gets, you know, has plan. I, I didn't want him rushed, so I was like, 
no rushing. Hey. We want this thing to be done well. So speaking of, you want May. to talk about this? Uh, yeah, finally, finally. So the uh, Ripaverse announced a new uh, thing that they're going to be doing called Rip Ascend for independent creators that uh, that just want to take the worry out of like uh, packing, shipping, printing, merchandise, a little bit of everything. And um, I, I had I had talked to Ripa beforehand. I was like, um, hey, hey, do you want to like, can I launch Acromatic Chronicles Blue like through your website, like stuff like that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was like, no, nah, we're not ready for all that. But then just recently he reached out and he was just like, hey, what do you think? And so I'm like, hey, man, let's do it. I think it's going to be great. So I, because I, I don't know anything about that world, you know? Jeremy's calling me. Why is Jeremy calling me? I don't oh, know. Anything. Pick it up. Pick it up. Uh, See what he has to say. Uh, don't 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 put it on mute. Make sure it's nice and loud. <laughs> I, I mean, what if it's an emergency? I don't know. Perfect. But yeah, so then he was like, he's like, hey, we're about to launch this Ripa Sand thing. Do you want to be a part of it? And we talked on the phone, and it's like, all right, let's do it, man. Let's let's do it. So he said, just call me later. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought maybe he was trying to do what you did to him at the at the pay. I got on paid a hundred dollars for that. <laughs> you got paid a hundred dollars for that? Yeah, yeah. I'm really doing that for free. So Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> but no, yeah. It's 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 uh it's pretty awesome. So it you know I'm I'm looking forward to it, and I'm kind of like, look, he's in the chat. He's in saying chat. My <laughs> What's up, Jerome? <laughs> Oh, Lord. But uh, what what everything that Eric July has accomplished with the Ripaverse and the great team over there and the people that you know are over there and um, it's it's I think it's just a win win for anybody that is uh, making comic books or graphic novels or anything like that. So I'm really excited to see how this works out. You know, I'm really I'm really excited to see. So we pushed the launch back a little bit. Uh, it wasn't for it wasn't because of the Eric July announcement. It was because um, my artist, who's working on it right now, you know, I he he could have like, <laughs> I was like, don't rush, man. Like, we just set a date. It's flexible because basically, what I want, I want to make sure the book is finished, and you know, once we put it out there for people to purchase, there's going to be a lot of cool things that that they can get, like little extras they can get with it, and then I want to send it out basically like a month after we close we close the sales. So that and that's just that's because that's just what I did last time. You know, I, I did. I was able I was uh, fortunate enough to um, do that, do that last time. Once we once we shut it down and I uh, was able to get the books out in about two months. So well, I'll tell you what, man, my my daughter loved blue. So looking uh, that's forward cool. to picking up three, man, or p picking up green for sure. It's going to be great. Well, another um, like crazy announcement is that like uh, they're probably gonna kill me, but uh, we're working don't on say it. Don't say working it. Working on an animation. It. It's okay. I'm in charge. <laughs> okay. uh, but we're working on an animation for Blue, mm -hmm. and um, we hope to have a, a cool teaser trailer in a few months. So let's go. Very man. excited. Man. Yeah, it's just like it's uh, it's just you know, just do it. This is just a a project that I've you know have put my heart into for years before like the star wars youtube thing was a thing and it's like you know we there was no better time especially like after the uh the lockdowns and everything it was like you know let's just see what we have here i was hoping to sell like a hundred you know like uh and, and that was it like i wasn't expecting it to be what what happened like that was mm -hmm. uh, actually quite shocking and um uh, you know, it was just kind of like a side project. And if it did, like, if I had sold a few, if I had sold, like, I think it was like $20,000 worth, I, I could have done the second one. But if it, if it didn't, then it would just been like, all right, no problem. Hey, I did. I put my money where my mouth is. I complained about all the stuff that's going into the school systems and stuff like that. I did all that. So, Hey, like no one can say I didn't try to like put out something that is like politic free and all that stuff. And, uh, so you That's know awesome, there we are man. but it, it did well and so like we're, we're i'm gonna finish the series is a four book series so um you know and uh 
yeah, we'll see what happens, man. I it, it, this world is new to me. It's just me just putting it out there. So love it, man. We'll see what hey, happens. Say it all the time. Got to go get it. You're going to get it. You're just doing it, man. I love uh, it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I, and I just wanted to do it myself, you know, like, and with the great support of like, I, and many people in my own chat and like uh, many people, you know, that are in this chat that have just been great supporters and encouragers through all that. It's, um, it, it's, it, this community is unbelievable. And hold on. <laughs> You're going to have what? a, uh, hello. Jeremy, I'm I'm live on side scrollers, man. Dude, it has always been a dream of mine to be on side scroller. <laughs> <laughs> no. I went broke. I'm on the streets trying to sell Dune popcorn buckets to recoup my funds, and I still this is but this is the greatest moment of my life right now. So thank you for allowing me this opportunity, Jay. Thank you. All right, you're welcome, man. But I gotta go, boss. I'll call you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. What are, you, are we all calling Jeremy? <laughs> hey, Jeremy, what's up? Hey, who's this? this is Stuttering Craig. You're on side scrollers. Uh, okay. I've told, dude, I've told you like a lot. You've been hitting me up to get on Geeks Gamers for years, and I told you to go through the proper channels. You, you are not important enough to call me. So. That's just how it is. So I'm sorry to do that to you, but it's just how it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who do you think you are, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> well, th thanks for calling, buddy. I love you guys. Bye. We'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my God! What a great what what a well, he said it, man. What a fun I love community. that guy, man. Love but it. no, yeah, it's like it's just a testimony to like the great people that are in this chat, and in my, in our chats, the geeks and gamers community is just off the charts. It, there's nothing like it. I, I don't think anywhere on YouTube, and uh, I, I I am beyond grateful. So it is. It so is yeah, special, so we'll see man. what happens. We will see what happens. Well, let us know how, however we can do to help get the word out whenever it's time for green. It's Appreciate great, it. Speaking of green, Steiner, Steiner Math came in and says, here or Jay's channel, it's high f and T Thursday. <laughs> Let's go. And this dude never super chats me, man. And he comes in <laughs> your like, what the D -Day Cobra with a $50 super chat. Oh, man. Tell you what. Uh, hey, look at this. We're going to get Jeremy on the wall, which is, which is just spectacular. I'm sorry. What's his name? D -day Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy. Jeremy is going Can you just on the yell wall. the word Jenny out? Let's just hear how it sounds. Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> the chats wanted me to call Jeremy. I'm not calling Jeremy. He'll just yell at me. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? Hey, that's be all done. Check this out. Insidious Bliss came in with Look at that. Look at that. Look at it right there. It's ridiculous. What a fun day. Uh, if you guys get a gift of membership, make sure you say thank you. I see Dan Vasquez in the chat says, I don't like Jeremy. Oh, man. He doesn't Easy. like Jeremy. He actually loves him. He loves him. Yeah. He loves him. Thank you so much, Insidious Bliss. Really appreciate that. Uh, Blaz, will you read this off from Dermy Wormy? Dermy Wormy says, serious question. Are women with green hair and or full? Jeremy's calling me. <laughs> 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 yes. You got it. I'll, I'll do what I can. Thanks, Blast. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Have a great day. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm just going to give out Jeremy's phone number in the uh, chat. So all you guys could just call him and talk to him. So uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Blabs, who was that? that? That was that was Jeremy. Oh, so nobody important. Got it. Sounds good. There you go. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Jeremy came in. Serious question. Are women with green hair? And or liberal in their uh, in their name, psychotic. This is an important question. Um, if uh, you're talking about green-haired anti-liberal, she's not psychotic. But um, all the other ones are crazy. There's that. I will say this. It, I think that anytime I see somebody with blue hair or green hair, uh, male or female, 
uh, there's definite hesitation. You know, they, they it's a stereotype that has uh, been warranted along the way of insanity for sure. So, um, <laughs> Yo Pop says, and you guys are cool. To to Craig and Jay. What's right. up, Yo Pops? <laughs> Not Blabs. He's my favorite Clemson. Korean. Yo Pops. Yo Pops. <laughs> Says, uh, says J greater than Maza. Let's go. Maza. Uh, I don't. I don't know about that. <laughs> but trampled on words. Cynthia came in as a member for one month. Thank you so much. And Blabs the Tower Tard came back. John Paul Jones patches and rum went. Um. Okay. So patches and rum is the uh, pirate podcast that we have on my History of Pirates channel that we do twice a month. And uh, you guys want us to do John Paul Jones? That's a uh, we can do that. That um, I'll see what the a lot of people don't even know who that is. So he's a, a great of... American man. <laughs> he helped win a war. So let's go. Excellent. Off. Blabs, go back to your tower. There you go. Okay. I see yellow flash in the chat. What's up, my dude? So let's go. Uh, that's awesome. Jonathan came in as a member. Says so. With all these firings in the game industry, is it time? Is it time to talk about we may be heading towards the third video game crash in our lifetime? Oh yes, Jonathan. We're going to get to that in just a little bit. We've been chit chatting here for twenty five minutes. Can't even get to the all the all the meat meat potatoes of the show. Or maybe this is the meat and potatoes of the show, and that's great. That's what happens when Jay appears. Jay Jay just <laughs> creates energy and fun, which, which is great. <laughs> Um, I don't know about that. Extra, extra Zero says, Jay should do a parody of his book uh, book with Craig. It's called Acrom <laughs> Acromatic Blue Balls. I think somebody else would be better suited to do the parody of the book, but yeah. That's hilarious. Peter, Peter says, hi, hi, Jay. If you're coming hey. to Calgary with Gina Carano, you have to get a Hungry Man dinner from Chicken on the Way. It's some of the best fried chicken in the city. Well, there you go. Jay. Oh, I will be there. We'll be in Calgary in April. So love that. That's great. I don't get in trouble with Canada again. So Hidden B says a whole bunch of my favorite YouTubers together. Thanks for making hey. the world my work day better. Let's go, Hidden B. And Al gifted five memberships to the channel. Let's go, Al. What's that? 20, 25 for the day. That's excellent. Thank you, Al. You guys got a gift membership. Make sure you say thanks. Consider paying it forward. But most importantly, you say thanks. Uh, Cleon came in and says, Hi, T side scrollers today. I dig it. Let's go. We need <laughs> just need Beardo. Let's get Beardo in. Let's go. No, nah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Let's get Beardo in here. It's crazy. Uh, and uh, Nagger Denal came in, gifted a membership. What's up, Sean? Channel. See, oh. everyone calls him Sean, and only Craig is the one who wants to try to. Sean is his freaking name. awesome, dude. Yeah. I love Sean. Mm -hmm. Sean I, wish he, I wish he lived in Central Florida. He'd probably hang out too much. Well, I met Sean uh, or Naggard and all and, uh, at the meetup in yeah. Orlando. Great dude. He's Great like dude. seven feet tall. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. a tree. Initial C came in and says, people with green hair are jokers. Batman tried to warn us, and now jokers are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> he tried. He tried. And Disco Cobra came Look in with Disco a Disco Cobra. Is that like Jeremy's alt? Nah, this is a good dude, man. Supports a lot of us. It's freaking, yes. freaking awesome. Disco Cobra is uh, spectacular. It says YouTube is done, dumb. Been trying to send this super chat about Dune Two, and it won't send. Who is seeing it? And are you getting the popcorn bucket? Jay, <laughs> you gonna go see Dune Two and get the popcorn bucket? Uh, uh maybe. Dune is never. I never was really a Dune fan. He doesn't fan. like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. Yeah. It gets everywhere. I'm sure it's all everyone's saying it's like an awesome to see in like IMAX who went and saw it. So just mm -hmm. because of their recommendation, I'll go see it. So but it just have, it wasn't it wasn't one of those movies that were like, oh my god, I have to go. Like I just never got into it. But uh I hope it's freaking awesome. Someone said bad taste, but I'm not saying <laughs> the movie's bad. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying like it just, you know, some some things weren't made for me. But the popcorn bucket, I just might walk in and get it. So you know. Well, don't you have the um, the Imagine Dragon, whatever it is from Disney? Oh, uh, Figme, yeah. Yeah, Figme, that was it from years ago. I remember that the whole yeah. debacle of that one. That was people waited eight hours mm -hmm. to get that thing. Does it still Dude. sell really high, like on eBay? Have you ever followed up with it? About two hundred dollars. 
They were selling those things for a thousand bucks, man. Wow. Oh, so they've dropped off, but they're higher than what they you originally. Yeah. For I mean, like they they're twenty. It was, they were like twenty two dollars to buy. Yeah. I just called my friend. I was like, "Can you hold two for me? I'm not waiting <laughs> in that line." They're like, "Yeah, go meet me next to Dumbo." <laughs> he knows the guy. All right. Ask for Greg. All right, with a G. Okay, he's gonna come out. He's gonna be a little funny looking, a little sweaty. He's been standing all day. All right, he's gonna hand you a box. Take that box to Gary. Right, he's working uh, the ice cream maker, and inside they'll put the popcorn. I was like, "All right, cool." So, I love, I love that you got in all for all for this little guy, huh? That's it. So they're that, cute though, but no that was way. the first. So that was the first Figment. Figment is like used to be the Epcot. Uh, oh, yeah. What do you call it? Like uh, mascot. Yeah, kind of like that. Right. It was like the it used to be, and, it, and it's one of the originals. Mm -hmm. And that was like the first time it's, it's, it's just kind of weird why Disney does this, but like they've actually made like some kind of like figure. Mm -hmm. So like the old Disney people that love figment from like back then they ran, they wanted to get it, but they waited. The The line was like when they offered it, you can only buy two at a time. And they waited like people waited eight hours. So like the Disney resellers showed up and they were paying people to stand in line. So while they went and got their kids, this is crazy, dude. It's a crazy story. They went and got their kids from school because every person could buy two. I don't know if you know what a reseller is. Mm -hmm. So they uh, so they paid people two hundred dollars to wait in line. There was like an ad on like Facebook or something like that. So these people waited in line for six to eight hours. Then when they got close, they switched with like a family of eight and each person like little kids were buying two. And then they put it back on eBay for a thousand dollars, and people were buying that craziness, man. Wow! I That's... walked up the very next day. I was like, "Hey, man, I'm gonna be there. Can you just get me too?" And they're like, "Yeah, go around to the <laughs> like." I literally walked to this back area, and they I just picked them up. No time at all. I was like, "Uh, kind of crazy." So. That's... That's insane. That is. It is. It's like, I wait six hours for a figment popcorn bucket. And then like, you know, so then they resold them a year later, but with a different, like, like a different, like necklace handle, I guess, whatever you call it strap. And so people, when they're selling it on me, they got to make sure they mention the, the first version strap because it's different than oh. the second version strap. And nice. I'm like, this whole thing probably costs a dollar to make. Like, it <laughs> right, looks, right. you know, it's crazy. But that was kind of the start of the popcorn bucket craze. Now look at where we are with movie theaters. Universal has hopped on this popcorn bucket thing. Uh, SeaWorld had like uh, Elmo popcorn buckets. They were selling for Christmas time. It was crazy. And people are like lining up to get this. And I'm like, who would have thought popcorn they, buckets, man? They created their own... Uh... Created their own environment, man. They, their own they started making a popcorn bucket for uh, Harry Potter and Universal Beijing, and it's selling for like forty five dollars yeah. minimum on eBay because it's only in Beijing. They don't have yeah. any here, which is that's weird. the thing with like the Disney stuff. It's like they only sell it in this particular theme mm -hmm. park. So the people that are Disney fanatics, they want they collect that stuff. So it's like they'll pay top dollar for it. Mm -hmm. But it's been a serious yeah. problem because when they, it, it, I don't, maybe not a problem, but these resellers show up on day one with like and garbage grab bags, everything. yeah, and they'll buy as many as they're allowed to buy. And if it's like only two per customer, they they bring in their cousin Billy, yeah. like you know, mm -hmm. like to stand in line with them and pay the money because this is like their full time jobs to go get mm -hmm. like the new pin. And then there there was a time when like Splash Mountain when they closed Splash Mountain this is crazy when they closed Splash Mountain they were selling the Splash Mountain plushies right Brer Rabbit Brer Fox Brer Bear and they're like you're never gonna get them again this is it and they were selling as many as people they were just trying to get them out of the store right so they people mm -hmm. came with like giant garbage bags and bought like fifty of them at a time dude mm -hmm. and like you know taking them out so. There's kind of tons crazy. of those people who are like personal shoppers too, where they'll charge you like fifteen or twenty percent on top of everything else plus shipping. Yeah. Well, I got some. Money. I I I went there, but you just gotta know people. When you know people, it's like, can you hold some? Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. so you go there and you get them, and then I sold. I sold like I paid like twenty two dollars for each, and then I sold the trio for about nine hundred dollars. So I almost made a thousand dollars on three 
on Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Bear, and Br'er Fox. So Jesus. that is a nice flip. Yeah, good, <laughs> good for you, Jay. That is spectacular. People man. are willing to pay for it, so why not? <laughs> I started the bidding at three hundred, and I looked like two days later on eBay. I was like, "Holy crap, dude!" Man. So good it's for all about you. all about who you know, Jay. That's yeah, great, dude. man. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm hey, famous uh, knowing people. That's the only reason why I'm here. <laughs> no, are you, what? Hey, what's up, movies? You want to do the act? We did the uh, Soka. You want to do Acolyte? Oof. Do you gonna really? Make that? I think we should. Have you I been watching The Bad Batch? No. No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Who is? <laughs> Except for Rhino. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, my boy, Devon came, Devon came in says, Hi, Hail Blast, That's my, my brother Jay. And my other N word, Craig. <laughs> Can't wait to buy your next book, Jay. Let's go. Oh, Don't thank you, man. Say the N words on here. What? Coming soon. Max also came in. I don't even know where to go with that. Max says, first Jay, then Jeremy, then Dan Basque. Dylan Mulvaney thinks this show is getting a little light in the loafers. Thanks, Max. Kelly came in says with the twenty dollars super chat says hey Kelly because we love Jay more than him. Well, <laughs> thanks Kelly. Appreciate, Appreciate it, it, Kelly. Oh my God, Big Raj came in with a nice super sticker. Thank you very much. The Rand Man came in says, "How's it feel to out outsell the High Republic?" Never in my wildest dreams that I think I would sell a book that would sell more than a Star Wars book, but here we are. But she did it, and here you yeah, are. Yeah, kind of crazy. This um, feels nice. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like, ha, suck it. Saturn Matt says, Jay doesn't like sand. How did Hayden Christensen feel about being asked about his feelings? Why do on you it? want to bring up a painful memory of my time with Hayden Christensen? <laughs> Horrible. I, I, I'm trying to remove that picture from existence, too, because people could see it in his eyes. Mm -hmm. So... So I right? got to like Hayden Christian was at like not this past one, but last year he was at right. uh, Megacon. And, you know, uh, because I work like with the managers and stuff mm -hmm. like with mm -hmm. Gina and everything else, like you get to know like the other managers. And I was like, hey, man, can I meet Hayden? He goes, yeah, he's kind of busy. Why don't you like I'll bring you to the back and like, you know, you can say, hey. And so then. We went, I, I got taken into the back real quick while he was on break. And I was like, you want to just do a quick selfie? I'll get out of your hair. He's like, Jay, no, man, no, no, no. Let, let, let's, take, let's take a nice one. Let's take a nice one. I was like, okay. So they, I got to cut in line for like the real promo photos. <laughs> and when I walked up, I was like, I was trying to be funny. But because there was like a million people wanting to meet him. And I'm like, hey, Hayden, is it true you don't like sand? And like they take the... <laughs> They take the picture and you can see Hayden's face like, all right, I don't know who this guy is and how he got access back here, but he needs to go. Time to go. So I'm sure he gets well, asked that a million times. You know, somebody gave him a jar of sand once. Yeah. I, you they know. wanted him to sign it. I remember seeing that. I was like, oh, God, this poor man. It's kind of oh. weird. Oh <laughs> he was like, so I was like, I never asked him. Either. He was at this last Megacon, too. And they were like, you want to go see? I was like, nah, I met him once. Like, <laughs> he probably still remembers you. He's like, you. It. <laughs> yeah. those, he has the, 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 the drunk 3PO dar on it where he's like, there he just sees you. He's like, that's the guy. He's nice, though. He he loves his fan base. Though. He loves him. He, he's, he's one of the, you, you hear horror stories about people like you know, not liking people, but mm -hmm. he's a good, he's a good, he's a good one. Hayden came in and says, I love this fellowship and group of people. All the content creators in chat constantly roasting each other, trolling each other, and showing up to support each other makes this group the best people, uh, the best place 100%. Uh, on the planet. Yes, absolutely. Hayden, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate your support, man. And uh, agreed, it's spectacular. Salty Source Rex came in and says, JJ, 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 did that Jeremy, Jeremy. <laughs> get you lunch yet, bro? Yeah, he also, did. Also, Ackerman. Uh, what? Acromatic. Acromatic. Acromatic means without. <clears throat> acromatic means without color, so it's kind of like a play on words where it's like the uh, Acromatic Chronicles blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, wait, what was the last of that? What well, question they asked? Yeah. Is it going to be individual adventures? <clears throat> it it's uh, individual adventures that all play together. So Acromatic Chronicles green is the same exact timeline as blue two different characters but in the same world so john who you met in blue will also be in green but it's happening at the exact same time 
So kind of unique. These two are cool. going to be kind of unique. So some of the stuff that people might have like a little, it will fill in some of the holes for blue, but then lead you into something completely, completely different. So as we get these stories, basically, it's a, if you don't know, it's a story of children that live in a world that have no color. And I wrote that uh, just basically thinking it, it's a long story and I won't get into it. But like, what would the world what would the world look like to a to like a sixth grader that has no purpose or value? And so I figured the world would look like just black and white and boring, right? Like everything's the same. Nothing ever changes. And so a student who begins to ask questions like, what's going on here, finds the color blue in the first book. And blue takes him on adventures where he finds his purpose and, and his own personal value as a person. So that's, uh, yeah. So it's that that's what I kind of like was writing. And so now like, it, yeah the first one's kind of like the giver yeah someone said that in the chat so but then like the story takes a big twist in the second one and it it goes into a different place so yeah the next student finds the color green and and so on and so on so are you telling are you letting everybody know what the other colors are Ah, uh, no nah, it's uh you gotta you gotta read the end of the book this so what people that bought blue knew that green was next because of how it ended so mm. Uh, you know. Joseph says, uh, Jay is the man. I am the law. <laughs> uh, Blabs, I got a song picked out for you next time Razor's on. Craig, uh, told you about it at the next, oh yeah, at the meetup. I remember Joseph, for sure. Uh, and uh, Crit Nature came in and says, somehow your Streamlabs doesn't work for me. I always get mm. an error trying to pay my method and try to be a debit card. Uh, never a problem on Nerdrotic. Anyway, Jay, well, Crit, thank you very much uh, for the attempt. Uh, Jay, any plans to play eight, uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag sometime? Oh, I've great played it. Again. I've played it. It's a great, great game. It's probably my, I mean, my favorite Assassin's Creed. So, I, I tried to replay it again online, but I I uh, ended up getting sucked into uh, Sea of Thieves, and I'm addicted to that game like crazy. So, what about uh, Skull and Bones? Have you played that yet? No, because it's all terrible. my friends that played it were like, it's terrible. So mm -hmm. I was like, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't waste the money. Yeah, there's like all these invi like uh, invisible walls that you can't go and explore. You can't even like really like capture a ship. Apparently it's, it's awful. And it, apparently, what, it's lost, it's lost all of its players, really. Was it wow. less than a million playing wow. it? Yeah, it's like it, the fact that it took them what ten years to get this. Game. Yeah, <laughs> exaggerating, it's, it's, but it's like, it's a big yeah, and loss. it's like, uh, yeah, we're going back to see if these now see if these are going to be available on PlayStation. So once uh, you know all the newbies like get on there, I'll be able to sink all their ships and take their booty for myself. I have a really big fat female character in Sea of Thieves. Her name is Chunky. I love it. Yeah, I think you've seen it before. I think it was an emote and somebody used it in your chat. And you're like, what is that, a potato? And everyone's like, no, that's Blaps' character. I love it. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I'm addicted to that game. I love that game. I played it when it first came out. We had some pretty fun adventures on that. It's it's great with friends. It's a it's great, great with game. friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's a, it's, a good, it's, it's a good game, friend. It's a yeah. Yeah, if, yeah, you're right. If you play it by yourself, it's like really kind of sad and pathetic. But when, if you have friends, like it's really, really exciting. Like most video games. Video games are a uh, are a communal effort. Uh, Kratos El Gratos came in with the $69 direct donation. Says, I only 69 for Craig's sweaty ear. Craig really likes that sweaty ear. Uh, I guess it just feels nice dripping in the ear hole. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing Jay around. Again, around the five-year anniversary, we met in Orlando <laughs> when I got Craig's Gina signed. Did you see I got? Uh... Yep, now he's got a Gina. He doesn't Kratos. have a Gina though. Kratos got that for me signed. Or is the Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's very nice. Me just Hanging waiting for my Matthew Lewis autograph one day. And then Kratos followed up with another thirty-two dollar direct donation. Says, "Am I the big pickle now?" Yes, actually, you would be the big pickle. Uh, says get that get that clip of the pirate saying "I'm the captain now." Then put a then, <laughs> yeah. Then, then put a pickle on it and make it not lame and not gay. In fact, if you could just go go ahead and make it amazing, that'd be great. Uh, would you just look at that? Thank you, Kratos. You are indeed the big pickle as of this second for sure. My God, you guys are ridiculous. Uh, Blabs came back in Hello. with this Blabs the Tower Chart. <clears throat> 
Blobs a tower to art for five dollars. Joy gets special treatment because people like think him like me. You may be cool, <laughs> but I have a sound bite from Superman. I like pickles and spicy. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty Thank good. You. Thank you, Blabs the Tower Tard. Kratos says, way to go, Jay. Take take back the rainbow from the alphabet, people. Ah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. And uh, while I get Tomok and Disco Cobra and uh, Kratos on the wall, Blabs, can you read off Cesario, please? Mm -hmm. Cesario says, I like that someone on Steam has an alert system on what games that Sweet Baby has touched. Really? Oh, Very interesting. And then Orthodox Monks for five dollars says Disney's card game Lorcana was similarly was simply scalped for insane prices at launch, but now singles are cheap. This idolatry of anything Disney is insane. Idolatry. Yeah. Dollar tree. Yeah, <laughs> I the idol tree, the idolatry tree of anything Disney is insane. <laughs> uh, I still have Tomok song I gotta sing. We'll do that in a little bit. And we got Disco Cobra on the wall. Let's actually get into some news. Uh, we do have a lot of rumble rants to hit as well. We'll get to those in just a minute, guys. Really yeah, that's awesome, that. man. You guys are getting like serious love. I like that. Yeah. That's amazing, man. Well, Jay, you're here. Like people, people love. <laughs> I doubt Jay. it. Doubt it's me, but Listen, it's pretty I'm, cool, man. Forty-five minutes in, you guys just reading supers. That's that's amazing, dude. That that is that it. is a blessing, bro. You're yes. Every viewer, every every viewer is a blessing. It's a miracle. Yeah, one hundred percent for sure um dude came in and says uh, the internet's job is to ruin childhoods then followed up with says gavin gavin mckinnis would uh would be a shoe-in for the pickle award mm. but not the big pickle thank you uh blake says why didn't you call game uh jeremy the gamer word <laughs> uh we're gonna avoid the gamer word because we we do want to be on youtube <laughs> for a little bit uh, all right, let's get into it. It's time for my favorite segment your favorite segment everybody in the world's favorite segment it's time for hard News. You know, speaking of Yumi in the movies, we do need to get there a green screen of him. Yeah, doing that. Eric, so, where's that? Eric, where are you? Eric, because I, I need to get the video version of intro <laughs> done. Yeah, that's great. All right. When he popped on the twelve-hour stream, he just did the yeah, and then he just left. And Gary was like, "Okay, bye." <laughs> and he just left. It was outstanding. All right, Jay, you like you like pirates and you like theme parks. <laughs> that, that's your internet uh, persona whatever. guy. Yeah. I love it. Um, and there was some news coming out of Universal Orlando today that we wanted to share with you today. As uh, hey, guess what? There's a new area coming. It's taking over the old Woody Woodpecker space. Yeah. And it's uh, going to be built around trolls and yeah. and uh, um, Shrek and Kung Fu Panda. There we go. DreamWorks Land. Uh, did you know about this before it was happening? Did you? Yeah, we knew about or? it a year ago. Yeah. Oh, well, screw me then. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> oh. This is the concept art. Well, we knew about this because when they got rid of the Shrek ride and changed it to the Minions ride and they moved Shrek over to this land already where you could meet Donkey. Um, one of my closest friends is actually the voice of <laughs> the voice of one of the characters over there. So um, what a humble brag. What a humble yeah, brag. Yeah, yeah. It's Donkey. I remember him. He used to be uh, around. It's actually, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's Donkey. So every time he sees me, like, he gives us, like, he talks to Jeremy, shouts out Geeks and Gamers, all that stuff. So <clears throat> so it's pretty it's pretty cool. And um, But they moved that whole section over there, and we were like, and what was over there before was um, Fievel. Do you guys remember the Fievel cartoon? Yeah. The yeah, mouse? Uh, yeah. Fievel goes west. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fievel and Fievel Goes West. Those are some of the greatest cartoons uh -huh. ever back in the day. So they had a Fievel playground area. They had a Woody Woodpecker roller coaster. They also mm -hmm. had Barney, a big Barney's, uh, Barney the Dinosaur playground area. And a Curious George uh, area, a water park. And this, this that whole area was designed for the little ones. You know, the little, the little lad. The little Billy and Sally, so they could they could go over there and just run around, get soaking wet, um, and be around those characters. So we knew. Also over there is the ET, the oldest ride at Universal Studios Orlando, the ET ride, and um, we knew like once they started boarding up the Barney area and they moved like Shrek and Donkey over there, it's like okay, well they're just gonna do something over there. So now they just made it official. So pretty well, good. That's not the so that's not the only change that's happening over there. As uh, you know, Epic Universe is coming 
uh, next year. Yeah, next that's year, a big yeah? one. That's huge. But uh, there was a video, I guess, that's leaked. I don't know if it's leaked or not. It's out there, but it's a Universal Epic Universe. This is actually uh, from Japan. We had the full perspective of the new Donkey Kong roller coaster, which is pretty pretty cool. Um, this is uh, this is the one that goes off the rails, but you can kind of see how it yeah works, just like Minecart Carnage. Back right, in the old exactly. Season. They they try to make it just like the video game, where uh, you jump. Yeah, jumping tracks and stuff like that. It's a brand new type of design. If you pause it there or right there, you could see how that stays on the track is that this, the track is on the side. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if people <laughs> if people don't know what's coming, that can really freak them out. Right. So, but this will be in Orlando and in Japan. This will not be in the California park. Well, Unfortunately, too small, right? The one in California. Yeah, it's, they, uh, they don't have enough. Up, right? They don't have enough land, but mm -hmm. it's just it, what's crazy is that they're actually building these rides and attractions in Super Nintendo, um, just like the video game. They want to make it a video game experience. You know, they they don't want to change. They don't have to like recreate the wheel, unlike what Disney's doing <laughs> when they mm. decided right. to make a Star Wars land and not have any Star Wars in it. So it's like it's it's crazy to me that this was the you know how simple it can be to get people excited about riding a ride when it's like a, a game that they used to love and play back in the day. So this is this will all be here in Orlando opening very, very soon. I mean, I'll so, tell you what, just just watching this as we as it going along, fun. like yeah, like like I'm kind of like my stomach kind of drops just even watching this perspective right here where you jump make this jump, you go. Ugh! And yeah, and there's no track. That looks right. cool. I, I I definitely want to try that one day. Just seeing, just uh, at the tail end, seeing this sticking out, you're like, oh my god. Yeah. You wonder if this is gonna have. Uh, this is one of those things where it's only gonna have that effect if you're sitting in the very front. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Like, can people who are sitting in the back can they even see what's coming, or else otherwise it's like, okay, it's not really a huge ah type of moment. I guess I guess we'll find out. But they maybe they've, they're higher up. Like they're, they're, well, the seat is up higher so they can still see over the person in front of them. What's going on? I mean, I had the opportunity to take Craig to Super Nintendo World Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So we've got a small taste of what's to come in Orlando. But the, the Orlando Park is supposed to be the biggest one mm -hmm. uh, as far as Super Nintendo goes. And, um, and the stuff that they're adding. There is a rumor that to compete with the Disney Princess castles that they're going to build a Zelda castle. Wow. So that will be Universal's castle. You know how like if you go to each Disney park, they have a castle for the princess. So Sleeping Beauty, I think, is in California. Cinderella's castle is here in Orlando. And that is the most photographed um, monument in history. The Cinderella castle in Orlando. More people take pictures in front of that than any other place in the world every mm -hmm. year. Every that year, is... whatever you think about Disney, it's it just how it is every year. So I, I, I almost think stat. that everyone has a photo that has been like, do you guys have a photo in front of that castle? Yeah, oh, when yeah. I was four. Yeah, I see everyone. Yeah, exactly. Over the years, it's like everyone's got a picture in front of the Cinderella castle. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, I'd be pretty neat their... to have the Zelda castle. So Zelda's an interesting take, though, because we have a pretty good idea of what like Princess Peach's castle looks like. But we, there's no... Maybe I'm wrong here. I, I don't know if there's a definitive version of the like the Hyrule Castle um, that that is out there. Whereas I feel like there's kind of a de definitive version of what Princess Peach's castle looks like. Uh, the, but the Princess Peach's castle will be in. It's in Super Nintendo World. It's like when you walk in, like you go through her castle, like you go through the green pipe, it makes the sound, right. and then you then you come out uh, through the castle. Yeah, it, it is so. up on. Yeah, you, you are. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So, well, either way. There's good things happening with uh, with Universal, but you know, and, and we talked about kind of how the, uh, the the train stays on here with this. But there's other news that has been uh, kind of hampering Walt Disney World, is that it's been ranked the number one ripoff tourist attraction <laughs> in the country. In the country, so this uh, travel advisor, I think, or trip advisor. They work with another group and they put together a poll of the biggest ripoff in every single state. And Florida had uh, Walt Disney World and California had Disneyland. 
But then they did the overall experience for all of the country. And Walt Disney World here in Orlando was voted uh, after even after questioning over a few thousand people, the number one ripoff in the country. And it's it, it's easy to see why it's because they're like they they advertise that a ticket to get into Disney is one hundred and nine dollars. Now, they're but I mean, every a lot of companies do this, so it's not that they're doing <clears throat> excuse me, anything wrong. But as long as they have one day out of the year, that's $109. They could advertise that it's only $109 to get in. The truth is the average price to get into the magic kingdom where Cinderella's castle is, is about $190 a day per person. Mm. And that doesn't include the park hopper where you could go here and then go to another park. That's an add on plus $30 to park. So you're looking at over $200 a person for one day at one park and you could go there and half the rides aren't working or it's right. like overpacked that you have to wait three plus hours just to just to ride anything if you want to get the line skipper pass they call it lightning lane um that's an additional 35 dollars per person and then on top of that once you get its particular rides they're charging individual money so if you buy their it, it's crazy if you buy their line skipper pass which is called the lightning lane it gives you a selection of rides that you could you could schedule to go but if like some of their other attractions that are really popular they want you to pay an additional uh 10 to 25 dollars per person to get that uh line skipper pass for a particular ride so you're talking almost 300 dollars a person for one day for half the rides just to go to the magic kingdom that doesn't include <laughs> you know food if you buy anything anything like that so that's a lot of it's a lot of money for a piece especially if you have larger families plus if you're paying for places to stay things like that if you're traveling in it's like it adds up really quick it doesn't so, make sense no the nickel and dime stuff was crazy because a lot of those options were free so like for instance you go to universe so you go to universal studios you want to get in you drive there you walk up to the counter. You're like, I want to get a ticket. They'll explain the different options. So you buy a ticket. It's a little over a hundred dollars. Usually, do the two park thing. And uh, if you want to skip the lines, they have a fast pass option. You buy one ticket, and it works for all the rides. So it's like that's it. It's very simple. You just show the ticket when you go up, and they have a separate line where you can skip. That's it. Done. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Disney is different. You got to download the app. If you buy a ticket, you have to get a reservation on certain days if you want to go. They're kind of trying to do away with that, but it's confusing because it's yes. it's you have to do it for some, but you can't do it for others. If you have this type of ticket, you can do it. If you have this type, you have to get a reservation. So basically, they want so you pay a two hundred dollars for a ticket. Then you got to go on the app or call them on the phone and say, "Am I able to go to the Magic Kingdom on Wednesday, so and so day?" And they'll tell you yes or no if it's yes they give you a reservation so now you have a reservation to go into the park that day if you have to cancel or anything else then you got to call it's a mess man it's like it's just for people that have never like haven't been to the parks in you know for years and they're like oh i remember let's just go uh there have been multiple people that have showed up and there's new news articles about this where people have shown up at the park just to buy a ticket and they're like, you can't get in here. You don't have a reservation. You don't do this. Right. We don't do it like this anymore. We don't do it like that. And they already paid for parking and they have to leave. So Universal did something last year when this reservation system was really going crazy. They were like, yeah, you come to our parks. We'll give you a little discount. <laughs> so it's like it's more of a headache than anything. So it's crazy. So, you know, uh, they're doing it to themselves and it's just we're kind of watching this this happen and and the crazy thing is is that they the theme parks as of right now according to their earnings call is the only thing that is making them money they're not making money with movies they're not making money on disney plus they're not making money anywhere else so the only thing that they have left is the theme park and they just announced yesterday that they're raising their ticket prices yet again so like, it it doesn't oh my god so it, uh, it looks like they're trying to like you know they're pushing out lower middle class um and then what they're I trying this, what, 
what they were trying to do in California. So what happens is people like me that have an annual pass because I do theme park reporting. I live close by. I don't have to pay. You know, I pay that one time. All I got to do is go twice. It pays for itself. Mm -hmm. I don't have to pay for parking. I don't have to buy anything in the park. I don't have to pay for food. I could go there for a few hours, do my video or whatever for the news. And then and then I could leave. Um, So, you know. I guess they're just trying to squeeze as much money out of like the people that that plan vacations than someone that lives nearby. So, oh sure, absolutely. The, the local business is is the the cherry on top to the whole thing. And yeah. as you're as you were talking, I was looking at the uh, the ticket price increases that have happened over the years. You mentioned the ones that are happening in 2025. It says uh, travel leisure spotted. So this is this is the the ticket increase that you're just talking about. One day tickets for the Magic Kingdom in 2025, $184. Yeah. With the Park Hopper ticket, which provides access yeah. to mul multiple parks, $247 a person. Yeah. Are you like, are you kidding me? That and is again, that's not including parking, which is 30 bucks. It's not including the Disney, the Genie Plus, which could be an extra, depending on the day that you go, an extra eleven to twenty-five dollars per person. If you want that option, um, that's not including, you know, drinks, food or anything like that. And and they're making, like I said, they're making it confusing for families on how this works. So, it's you know, and it's like and if you don't have the app downloaded, you can't use the line skipper or there's certain areas you can't even get food because you got to order through the mobile app. So if you just want to go there and have like a peaceful time, people are choosing to go to Universal or going to other places where it's like, I just want a ticket. And I want this ticket. That's all I want. Like, mm -hmm. that's all I want to do. I just want to walk around, maybe ride a couple of rides and go home. I don't want to focus on my app. I don't want the app to tell me when I have to get in line for this ride. If I want the, like, I don't want to deal with all that stuff, you know? And so we, it, it was interesting because this travel agent a few years back was, was making predictions. He goes, if Disney theme parks stay the way that they're doing in about three to five years, people just won't, they'll, they'll choose to go somewhere else. So it's like, so they're seeing this like after the lockdowns, like now they're starting to see like we're not going. What Disney did last year, which was crazy to me uh, because it's never happened, at least from what I remember. And someone can please feel to correct me. Over the summer, their busiest time is usually when it's the most expensive to go. Last year, they offered such a massive discount ticket because they were like, no one's coming to our parks. And so there was there's articles where it's like Disneyland is that we on park hop and we showed it. We were like, I, this is crazy. July 4th supposed to be the busiest day uh, last year. One of the most busiest days of all theme parks. It was five minute waits for like almost all the rides. People chose uh, Universal was freaking packed while the Disney World parks were like empty. It was crazy. And it was like, I don't I don't understand like how like that's possible. So then they offered. When that when that came out, they offered this ticket like, hey, we'll give you half off. Just come come to our parks because they need to get those numbers in But when they present it to the board. It's like we got more people showing up, things like that. And they do this for a lot of stuff, too. Like you remember Disney Plus, they offered Disney Plus for a dollar ninety nine. Yeah. Um, at one point, it, which seemed like they were just trying to get their numbers up for, I don't know, stocks. Just, I, that's beyond me. I don't know. But uh, we saw then once the discounted ticket hit, we saw that, yeah, the parks were packed with people, but people were complaining on the exit polls and stuff that they gave out. They were just like, I'm not kinda like I, this is too complicated for me. You know, they saw like the normal people that don't do, uh, you know, investigation. They see like the advertisement. Oh, my God, you can go to Disney. It's half off right now. Bring your family. There's not a better time to go, you know. So they go and they buy all these tickets and they set it up. They're like, oh, we're going to have a great time and I'm saving some money. Then they get there. It's like this is a this is a this is crazy. It doesn't work. So now what they're seeing is that people are choosing like we had a census report where it came out the total numbers and the first time in their history Universal had more visitors. It wasn't by a lot, but it was it still was a win. They had more visitors going to the Universal parks than any Disney park except for Magic Kingdom here in Orlando. So that's, that's, that's never that's happened not, before. And yeah. so it I, I don't get it. it, it they, they need to start seeing that this is a an epic universe is about to open with 
an entire new Harry Potter experience that they are keeping it on super lock and key because it's supposed to be something like that people have never seen before. Mm -hmm. Right. They've got Super Nintendo World and they've they just and they've also set up something that people aren't really talking about is in Florida. There's a brand new train system called Brightline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when Brightline was building their train system from Miami and all these places and it, and it just opened and they're still building more stuff. Um, Disney took away one of the most coolest things that they used to have years ago called the Magic the magic bus express magic express yeah, bus magical or something express. like that yep. yeah magical express so basically when you booked your disney uh vacation they would they would pick up your luggage for you you would just get on the bus and when you went to your hotel your luggage was magically in your room right it was it was uh, it was amazing like, <laughs> it was we, cool we right and so yes. they had all that stuff and now like they canceled everything so it's like there's no like pickup from the hotel uh, from the airport so they're building this train system, and the train system went to Disney, and they were like, hey, uh, we want to build a train stop, like, right here, like, near your parks. Like, could you help us out with some land, some money? Mm -hmm. And Disney goes, uh, we're Disney. You should want to build one. You need to, like, pay for it yourself because you'll get more business that way. As soon as that happened, Universal stepped in and said, we'll give you all this land. We'll give you hundreds of millions of dollars. Build a train stop right in front of Epic Universe where people from Miami, Tampa, wherever can get on the train, go to Epic Universe for the day, get back on the train and head, head home and from the airport. So the uh, train station was like, all right, let's do it. So they're building that. Uh, now Disney's come back and say, I can't, hey, hey, hey can wait, you give us wait, a wait, little wait. something here like next to Disney Springs, like something. So I guess they're working that out as well. But their arrogance is costing them. You know, their arrogance is costing them. And this whole time, Universal's just like, just keep doing it, Disney. Keep I, doing it. I so, think it is so it's Sorry, so that was a long excited. rant, but I just had to put that all in there no, for the... Because even like, was it a couple of weeks ago, we were just saying how like there are courses that are like uh, people who are big Disney fanatics are offering to help these tourists plan to go to Disney because it's so yeah. overwhelming and so confusing that you have to take a class just to go to Disney. Like, and more That's crazy on top of that. So it's like, damn. But I'm just like, you know, and people through. will argue back and forth that it's not really like this or like, and it's fine. But like the, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's that's what? how it is from my perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, they put together a Star Wars hotel, charged six grand for two nights. Everybody and even my grandmother was like, how is that going to stay open? Who, right. Who's paying for this? Right. Who the freak is like, how is this going to stay open? For, you don't even offer like all Star Wars. You offer Ray and Kylo as the main attraction. Mm. And all of us called it. This is going to be shut down in months, in months. Mm. And sure enough, didn't even take a year. I had they to shut it learn down from their mistakes because they just showed it that they're trying to take away the middle class with that Star Wars hotel. They yeah. wanted it for the luxurious people who were not going. It was they were not going at all. And now they're doing it again with all the prices and tickets and they're not learning it from their mistakes. So the, it's a shame that, because it was once upon a time a magical place. This is such it's very short sighted by Disney because what's happening is they're they're pushing out all the <laughs> they're catering to these adults with expendable income, like, and not just expendable income, major expendable income. You're dealing with a very high class, a uh, very high uh, uh, income person who wants to go to Disney world. And in theory that weeds out the park, you can have, you can make just as much revenue with less people. Um, and obviously they're doing great from a revenue perspective right now, but in 10 years from now, the all the three and four and five year old kids that uh, would initially have that first wow magical moment at Disney World, they they would have had that ten years ago. Those kid those uh, those kids are not having that now, and they're having that experience at Universal. So I think what you're going to see is just this shift to where um, in while the shift is happening with Universal. I think in five ten years from now, it's going to totally shift on shift the access to where. These kids will have uh, Universal will be the nostalgic place. Universal will be the place where they had those wow memories and Universal will be their childhood. And Disney is just straight up shitting the bed. Like there's really no way to like, I don't understand how anybody would be like, yes, we're, I don't, we're on I don't a really either. Good it's just, I think it's pride and arrogance. It's like, we've never been challenged before. 
This is the only thing they have left that is making them money at the moment, unless they start selling off assets or whatever it is. Um, and that's according to their earnings call. And it's like, you know, I, what are you going to do? <laughs> it's like, you just watch like they, they're, they're talking about like the next few things that they plan on changing is pirates of the Caribbean. Um, oh. classic Disney. they changed it once already. And yeah, uh, they had the girl, they, the girl pirate, right? Yeah. Well, the pirates were bidding on women and they oh. had a chunky woman and the redhead was behind her and they were like, bring on the redhead. We want to bid on the redhead. We don't want the, we don't want the fat girl. Right. Like, so it was kind of a thing, right? So oh, they were like, in the right, a, it was. They were like, well, they're pirates. That's what pirates do, <laughs> right? It's pirates. They are pirates, right? Pirate, they're burnt. Listen, the thing is, in the freaking ride, they're burning the entire <laughs> village down, right? And right. stealing all their stuff. But the fact that they want to bid on a woman, that was the offensive part. It's like, what about them killing everyone and destroying their homes and stealing all their stuff? You know, that's so that one, that part's okay. But uh, yeah, they changed that to where they're selling rum, and the the redhead is now a pirate. So they because that was offensive. They took down Splash Mountain, and they're changing it uh, because that Splash Mountain was offensive. I guess to somebody I don't know. Brer Rabbit is offensive. Song of the South is offensive, and they didn't want to offend anybody. So. Yeah, they, so they, they, they so they so they're, they're catering that. to this group, you know. They're like catering to this group that they think was on the right side of history, and they think that will. And, and listen, people that go to both parks, they clearly see a difference in the people that attend. You you go to Walt Disney World today, and I'm just saying, I'm not trying to like, you know, people can do whatever they want. They're adults, but the amount of people wearing masks still at Disney World in Orlando compared to the people that don't wear masks at universal it's just it's like a different group disney has also they introduced a tron ride it's a motorcycle ride like hagrid's right mm -hmm. and because people complained and we're talking about i'm being nice here obese people complained that they couldn't fit on the ride disney changed the ride some of the seats so that large people could fit in it larger people people that live around the buffet, I guess they 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 can fit in it, right? So, um, so like they they're catering to a group now. These same people went to Universal and was like, "We can't fit in your Mario Kart ride. Can you change it?" And Universal was like, "Uh, no, it's a safety issue, so I'm not changing the ride." So it's like, oh my god, you know. So now they're like, "This is why I prefer Disney over Universal because I can fit in it." So. You know, there you go. It's just crazy to see this. You know, it's just like this is who you want to cater to. They've gotten to this place where they're like, we want to make sure everybody feels welcome. They've gotten rid of like, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Now they just say uh, dreamers of all ages. Right. So right. it's like they're trying to they're trying to create a space where no one is offended about anything. Everyone is welcome, no matter what your size is. And so come to our parts. They, they think that this is the the way to keep it moving in the right direction. Is it, this is a legit like, question. Legit question. Do you see in our lifetime Disney World not shutting down, but it's already a shell of what it was, and that's from 10, 15 years ago. But do you see the ramifications of, I, I don't know, could you see Disney World potentially shutting down i don't think it'll shut down because they employ too many people i think in the right. orlando area i read uh last year that 80 percent of the people that that live in around the orlando area has something to do with theme park work something in theme parks whether mm -hmm. it's you know in a restaurant nearby a hotel an off-brand hotel something like that something so I, I think they employ way too many people for i hate to say it even the government to let them fail at this point right. and um so I, I do think that new leadership will get involved and, and they'll make changes. So eventually it's just going to be like, you know, when they once they run out of everything, it's like, what are we going to do next? They just said they're going to uh, inject $60 billion into their theme parks and recreations. But but then they just recently came out and said that it's uh, more on their cruise ship. So now their cruise line is doing well. So now it's like, well, that's making us money. So let's dump all our money in the cruise ships. But 
you know, I eventually it, it catches up. It, it catches up eventually. So ba basically what we'll see is like, hey, a new ticket. Hey, we've changed our prices. Hey, come right. on down. Like we, we've changed it up. So I, I think new leadership is is I mean, they've already changed the leadership in their their movies like that. I think the guy retired or was fired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's um, yeah, I read something like that. So eventually that that will happen. What, but, what's uh, amazing about this is like it, when you when I hear you speak about this, it seems very reactionary, whereas Walt Disney was a visionary. And there's those are two very different things. One was looking forward while one is reacting to something that already happened. And that's what you see with Disney leadership right now. Well, this is working. Let's do more of this. All right. Sounds good. Instead of let's let's figure out what the next thing is that's going to be the next well, big hit. I so. think the the thing with like Bob Iger, Bob Iger was just his earlier run at Disney was what's successful out there? Star Wars. Let's buy that. Oh, X-Men was successful. Let's buy that. Oh, Marvel, man. Let's buy that. You know, so he just bought stuff because he thought like, you know, they just bought stuff and ruined it. Right. You know, and now it's like, now they're like locusts. They're going to the next thing. What, what can we ruin next? Fortnite. Let's ruin that. You know? So, wow. You Let's, just you uh, said something that really like resonated with me. You said there's like moving from and then ruining things. It's like EA, man. They'd go in and buy companies and they just like ruin these ruin these development companies when it comes to games. If I can bring it back to games for a second, it's like Disney. Disney is the EA of the entertainment space. That's yeah. Wow, that just that just hit me, and that's so sad. It's just so fucking sad. Um, Crazy T says, as a Central Floridian, I agree with you. Oh, but, thank you. Followed up with says that's why Disney is going downhill. Thank you so much, Crazy T. Mercenary says for backing me up. One hundred nine, hundred ninety dollars. I remember as I remember as a kid, it was twenty dollars for adults. Um, and he followed up with says as a kid in the eighties, I remember Disney costing twenty bucks for an adult, and kids like me got in for free and free parking, and teens and seniors got in for twelve bucks. You can tell the magic is gone, and the very least, uh, at the very least, went elsewhere. I'm telling you, Disney is going to go bankrupt. Yeah, and um, the thing is, it's like it's not like the parks are like a ghost town, you know. But it it they they offer these weird specials, you know, and it's like people take advantage of it. But it, it start we're starting to see it, like you know, like this past week too, they announced they're like, you don't need reservations, just come to our parks because they were empty, mm -hmm. you know. But then like a special holiday weekend, they'll pick back up again, you know, like the the the, the they'll be full. But then it's like. You know, but then like during the week, it's like you could go on a Wednesday and like not see too many people there. <laughs> it's kind of right. crazy. So Naganal says, uh, Sean says, uh, side scrollers just killing it with hard news and great guests. It was a pleasure meeting you. And and uh J2. Um yeah, KJ is a freaking man. Love y'all. Hey, thanks so much, buddy. Appreciate thanks, that. And let's talk about it. it. Says Craig has beautiful eyes. Blabs has a beautiful smile, and Jay has a beautiful heart. Never change. Also, Blabs re rank Hell Divers two again from your zero. I'm gonna give it a seven and a half right now. I'm still working on it. All right. And, I, had uh, have, I had to go through two patches to get the game to play. Well, you, you got it working though, and that's the yeah. most important thing. And it was fun. Right. I got to witness Disbrew yelling. <laughs> we've got a we, we've done a lot of a lot of Disney today. Let's let's do a little bit of a uh, video game news as right. this was kind of interesting well this is very interesting given everything that uh, has been going on over the last uh last little bit we are 59 days well i guess technically 60 days now into 2024 and in the industry over 8100 people have been laid off over 8000 people have been laid off in the video games industry it seems like every week we have some sort of story of people, whether it was Unity, you saw Unity, that was a big story. Discord, every everybody is getting laid off for some reason in the video game industry. We are seeing a massive collapse. This ranges from you know less than ten people, three people, up to up to uh, today's announcement of EA announcing uh, another almost seven hundred people being laid off. This has been a consistent theme in the industry, and on the same day that EA announces that they are laying off more people in the first two months as eight over 8,000 people have lost their jobs. Rockstar developers, the developers behind GTA 6, are unhappy 
to be forced to return to the office to finish <laughs> up GTA 6 final stretch of development. It's the most tone deaf thing I may have ever seen in the industry uh, in 18 years as people are li literally losing their jobs and they're saying, but they're, the, it's Rockstar's reckless decision to force staff back to the office. And that there's a quote from one, one person says, working, working from home has, has been a lifeline. No, no, no. I'm going to correct that. Working from home has been a convenience, which is no longer afforded here. Um, this is from IGN. Now, this, they, they have different rules. Over, they, now, this is being developed by a company over in uh, primarily the UK, Rockstar North in, uh, in Scotland. So obviously, when people think about the uh, US labor laws versus uh, labor laws in Scotland, they're a little bit different. Uh, but last year, 170 Rockstar game workers in the UK signed a petition opposing mandate. Listen, to this this is just this is just my God! It just drives me crazy. Last year, 170 Rockstar games workers in the UK signed a petition opposing mandatory three-day office work. So going into the office three days a week, and they were like, "No, we can't do that." And uh, now workers are accusing Rockstar of broken promises and have expressed <laughs> concerns about health. Caring responsibilities, living arrangements, and heightened risk of work overlord uh, overwork, uh, also known as crunch. That's like the big buzzword in the video game space. Is cr you can't have crunch? It's ridiculous. And, and um, uh, here's the, the IWGB, which is uh, the Independent Workers Union of Great Britain, also alleges Rockstar has um, insisted flexible work options would remain available. Uh, in an employee-wide email, this is a this is a while back. Says this is this isn't our first step to five days of work week. Uh, no one wants to go back to the old ways of working, and uh, they're saying it's, it was broken promises. And but they're in this uh, final final stretch. But this is uh, from from somebody, an anonymous rock star worker, and these are just soul crushing to hear, and honestly, just crazy. Working from home has been a lifeline for many of us at Rockstar, allowing us to balance care responsibilities, manage disabilities, uh, manage uh, care responsibilities, manage disabilities, and relocate as we need. So once again, as opposed to a lifeline, you mean convenience. It has been a convenience for you. Now Rockstar is snatching away that, conven that lifeline convenience mm. without, without a second thought for the workers who will be impacted most. After so many broken promises, we now fear management may even be paving the way for a return to toxic crunch practices. Senior leadership needs to rethink their reckless decision-making and engage with their staff to find arrangements that works for everybody. I mean this in the best possible way to that wow. person. Fuck off. Like, <laughs> fuck off. It's... It's crazy. Imagine Jay, being yeah. outsourced instead. <laughs> right. Then what Imagine they that. Yeah, or, you I know. wonder if these guys would ever talk to uh, the ones living in Japan, working on those anime productions where they don't actually sleep ever because they're always working. I wonder what these guys have to say to these guys. They're like, ah, I have to go back to work in an office. It's terrible. Listen, the only thing I can say for that was sure it helps manage your kids when you're home. You can babysit them. You don't have to send them off to daycare or whatever. And that's a huge issue, right? Parents no longer being able to parent their children. However, you can always get another job then, right? If you're going to cry about it, do something else then that would allow you to do what you want to do and make it convenient. I'm just saying. So the comments here on this article have been about what you can expect you know because you're talking about you're telling this to people who work day-to-day -day jobs we talked a little bit that, about this yesterday the idea of like streaming is so hard it's like shut up get over yourself uh you, you, you saw that controversy uh over the weekend yeah. uh but this guy overall he says this is what it's like to work for someone <laughs> you can search for other employment if you don't like the work culture location hours etc the organization and its leadership must do what's best for the organization and stakeholders so long as it's ethical, moral, and legal. Uh, requiring employees to return to work is not illegal, unethical, or immoral. I'd prefer to work from home too. I'd also, uh, I'd also complain about uh, and have complained about losing uh, telework, but uh, I also choose to stay in my current position, which I know I can leave and find other work, right? And that's just 
really what it comes down to is like is there a reason why they were called back to the office like productivity well, maybe because people get lazy at home and I don't know the reasons, but I'm going to assume that. And as somebody yeah. who has uh, worked both remotely and in an office setting, I think anybody who's worked in any sort of physical setting can tell you that generally the vast, vast, vast majority of time production is way higher when you're surrounded by other people. And the reason that is obviously if I want to, if, if Blabs and I work in an office and I need to know something from Blabs, I can just walk out to Blabs and say, Hey Blabs, Tell me about this. Mm -hmm. And then you have a conversation instead of having to um, yeah. reach out, email, whatever. And it, it, the, pro, the, pro, the production of, of working remotely was such a convenience uh, to people that the idea of giving of stepping back in the office is just it's mind numbing to me. People are so unbelievably privileged unbelievably privileged and they don't even understand I think it man. it's also when you're working in an office you have this motivation to be like all right i'm gonna get this day done so i can go home but once you're actually working from home you don't have that entire motivation to be like i want to be done with my day and i can do whatever i want at home because you're already at home i think I, that's also another thing motivation I, I i mean if i got called back to the office i wouldn't cry about it like they're doing mm -hmm. would i be aggravated probably but uh when i was teaching from home you know, like you have to log in and you're you're constantly I mean, I was like constantly on like a Zoom call. So it's not like I could just not be there. So I I always thought that the that they would discover some kind of I don't know, like not not like a watching device, but something that could monitor people's, you know, production from from home because I, I really see like in the near future when people are building new houses there's going to be like an like an office a new type of at home office being put in in homes and these giant sky rise buildings might not even be needed uh for much i i know like the traffic uh in that because that will cause that that will solve a lot of problems if more people work from home <laughs> like traffic issues and mm -hmm. things like that like that i think it's it's definitely the future, you know, working from remote. I mean, of course, there's certain jobs you can't do from, you know, from Surgeon. home. But uh, <laughs> it's like uh, I, I would I would be curious to see what the reason was that they called them back. If they were just like, we need to get everybody back in the office. That way we can get this done on time. Uh, let's get it done. You know, just but uh, I just issue. I just think the home office is going to be. I mean, I, a lot of people have a home office already, but I think it's like it's going to be kind of like a new a thing like like a like yeah built building in some of these new homes mm -hmm. where it's like people will work because i know a lot of people didn't go back after the lockdowns like a lot of people you know a lot of companies made it easier yeah, for people to stay home buildings so you know well it's it, so uh, is there, there there are people in that like john and epsilon uh, like they they disagree right and yeah. i think that th you know th there are there are there's definitely a conversation to be had but i'll say this it goes back to what that guy said. At the end of the day, there's a deadline attached to this product, right? Yeah. Remove the idea that it's GTA 6 out of the equation. Put it, you know, there's a whatever whatever project A that you're working on. There are deadlines that need to be hit. And in order for that deadline to be hit, a giant group of people all have to be moving in, in the same direction, yeah. right? And when somebody, what it goes back to the convenience aspect of working from home, right? And in the middle of the day, you can stop, you can take a walk, you can go pick up your kids, you can do whatever you want, right? Um, and that, that's all great and dandy. But in a in an office setting, uh, the reason why the reason why it's valuable to employers is they have an opportunity to keep you focused more than anything, right? Um, they allow you to to stay on task, build a culture. We talk about culture all the time uh, in in video games. All oh, the culture and this this development is so bad, right? Well, that. The, the remote work may have something to do with it. I, I'm I personally, as somebody who has run several companies, I I'm a big believer in working working out of an office. Now, small companies, I'm not talking about eight, nine hundred people, right? I'm talking about you know 10, 20 people, right? Um, but I think it's important to have that inter interaction with people, to get to know people on a day-to-day -day basis, to get to know people personally uh outside of the office. And there are times where um where you get done working and you say, Hey, you want to go grab a drink? Hey, you want to go get some food, whatever it may be. And you get to know that person a little bit better. And ultimately that improves the culture more. 
people could say it's a boomer take. Fine. That's fine. But I'm going off my personal experience. Um, I, well, you know, I'm you know what's crazy? Like, I don't know if you've ever saw like like uh, office buildings and like Google and like Twitter before it was bought. It was like like a party place. Like they had rec room, game rooms, yeah. um, places where you could go think. <laughs> they had special desks like where it's just like really small that that you can make phone calls and no one could hear your conversation. Like they they built it like it was very modern, you know. And uh, so like, I guess they wanted people to to play games with each other, I guess like ping pong in the break room or something like right. that. So I never had the luxury of working in an office that way. So it was just, it is what it is. Yeah. I and have to agree with Craig on this. Um, when I was working, no, I never really had an office job because I was always doing like farm work. So I was always out in the fields with people, but like at the end of the day, we'd be like, you guys want to go get food after we're done with all this work and we'd be out there. And I feel like it was also a little just bit of, bit like more beneficial social wise instead of being cooped up at home all day long because like i was saying before you're done at home then what like do you go out some people might but a lot of times you're like i'm so tired i'm just gonna go watch something on tv and not even go out and socialize because you're exhausted whereas if, if you're already out you can go out more i guess is my point it all depends on the individual some yeah I just, I just go back people. to it, look so <laughs> just hate right. people. yeah and, and look to each their own right but but once again, it goes back to, I don't know why they're asking these people to come back in, but I will say this, when there are colleagues of yours, 8,000 colleagues who have been fired in the last 60 days and for you to complain about working, yeah. it's extremely tone deaf. Mm. Like- oh, I you, agree on that, yeah. Like I said, yeah. I probably wouldn't cry, but I, I, would, I, I wouldn't write an article and be like, I gotta go back to crunch thing. I'd, I'd be more aggravated, but if I'm hired and this is my job, this is how I provide, you know, yeah. you got to do what's asked of you or, or go somewhere else. You know, and I, we've talked about this many times. Like I said, there are people who are very passionate about this in the chat. And I appreciate that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful thing. Like if we agreed on everything, this would be a really boring show. Yep. Right. I, I, if we agreed on 100 out of 100, 100 things, hey, that's I don't really know. I, I think it would be a ridiculous, stupid echo chamber. We don't want that. Right. Um, Crit Nature says, and they wonder why they got hacked. Talking about uh, Rockstar says, You'll never have the same level of IT security working on home than in the office. It just isn't happening. Crit Nature, thank you very much. Uh, Andrew came in and says, working from home is a privilege. As an employer, I know from experience working from home is not for everyone. Some people like to stay stay home and uh, to slack off and not work. Oh, yeah. That's, sure. I agree. I think it's all individual. Mm -hmm. Extra Zero says, I disagree. We saw productivity skyrocket when, when we were remote. Uh, too much socializing in office, and I spend commute time working. Would love to chat. Yeah, I, I think yeah, it really I, does. I, I, Go ahead. Yeah, again, I think it's individual how how it works. Some people can self motivate. Some people need they need that timer, man. They need to punch in. To, uh, you know. Yeah. So, um, Agmar came in and says, "I agree with Jay, but but also these companies are paying for a lease on their respective office. I understand both sides." Right? Um, Imagine the I, amount of money I, they're going to save when they get when they when they close out on these buildings because everyone oh needs, can God. just work at home. Mm -hmm. There, there's a lot of truth in that, and I'll say this about the. Uh, I don't think they've said anything about this being a permanent thing. You know, if if there's a six month window where they all have to bear down and get their shit done, let's get through that stuff, and then we can go back to yeah. to the way it, you know, the way it was before, or whatever. You know, they're not saying this is forever, so. Um, Goodrich Games came in and says people were called back to the office because game companies had large campuses they owned and were paying for it, but were empty. Mm -hmm. Also, working from home killed productivity. Thanks, Goodrich Games. Uh, Extra Zero says being asked to come back in because office real estate is in the gutter. Also, funny they want to be green, but uh, but putting people back on the road daily. Right? Yeah, um, I think it has a lot to do with the real estate. Honestly. Mike sees this. Some jobs can't return to the old model. My agency, so brother in New York, Mike, it's my dude, started hiring remote across uh, country during COVID nineteen, and some of us even moved. Now we operate on a hybrid model. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. And uh, Devon says, my experience at a game company with crunch over two years, making a game with a team effort, and uh, that's why we didn't work at home. Breaks and stuff was cool. Thanks, Devon. Appreciate that. I mean, just you think about like insurance the 
that they could save on rent, on leasing, on building, like all that stuff that they that some companies can save by keeping people remote and keep people from fighting with each other. Mm -hmm. um, right. I said, or getting it's an interesting conversation. In the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to worry about that kind of stuff leaking out. So it's an interesting conversation, and uh, and I think it ultimately it's up to the company, the people who are paying paying the bills, you know, paying you to allow you to pay your yeah, bills. Yeah, if I they have a, if they have decision. a reason to bring you back and you work there, like you should, you got to, yeah, off you go. Off you go. And Goji the King Look at that, came dude. in with a $100 super chat. It says, I love going to the office. It gets me out of the house. It allows me to look forward to going home every day. If, mm. if uh, home was work, I wouldn't want to be home. It would, I would be, I would, uh, it would suck to be stuck at home indoors all day, every day. These people need to go outside. I'll say this, man, as somebody who does work from home, working from home can be, despite hanging out and talking for 90 minutes, two hours every day, it can still be incredibly lonely. Um, and I just, you know, I like being around people, but once again, some people don't, you know, so, hey, do me a favor. Look at that. Look at that. That is spectacular. <laughs> Look at it. That's cool. Look at that. That is very, very cool. Maybe I should do um, that. We are an hour and a half. Hey, we, we, we pop it on. There you go. <laughs> um, we do have, uh, I'll tell you, Jay, I know you got you got your show here in 25 minutes, and we're going to send everybody over there. Yeah, I'm good. Just a little bit. Uh, do, do you have a little bit more time to spend with us? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. My show's not cool. as professional. We just kind of like turn on the camera and <laughs> just turn on the camera and go. Yeah. Well, I still have my song to sing from Tomok here. I'll do that here in just a little bit as well. Oh um, but Labs, I want you to take us through this story. You, you're now in Hell Divers 2, and uh, Hell Divers 2 announced today uh, <laughs> that they actually have a game master in Hell Divers yeah. 2. So wait, what is that? Wait, wait, wait. Hey, wait. What is this ad here? Uh, someone needing every day some. Matters. Discover what is every this? Day, twice someone, someone's been day. looking up. Uh... What is it? What, uh, breast cancer? Uh, God, I hope not. I hope I haven't been doing that. Every day matters twice a day. Verzinio is right. used for a, to treat certain types of breast cancer. Well, telling me something I don't know. Well, that's that's tough. I'll pray Shit. for you, Craig. Sorry, <laughs> didn't know Jay. that was happening. <laughs> rough, rough day, man. <laughs> rough day. <laughs> Gotta start checking, checking areas. Gotta do sure. the thing in the shower. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take us through. You're you're a Hell Divers fan. Seven point five out of ten. Yeah. Well, I finally got it working, so I am a bit stingy with it. Um. Yes, Eric. I finally got it working. So, if you guys don't know, Hell Divers Two is basically every single player who's playing it is on the same team against the developers. So there is this one guy in Hell Divers. His name is Joel, and he's basically like the game master. Where if he's angry or he just feels like getting up and ruining your day, he will do that and go and make the automatons and the bugs do something incredibly insane and basically just take over an entire area. And so it's just really funny because all these people are like, we'll wake up the next day after defeating something and then they'll f find out all their efforts have been wasted because he'll just go and destroy it. And I love that. Because it's such a fun game, right? It's a never-ending game. You're always in war. So... So I this is a guy. I wish we could find his last name so we could bring him on, but all we know is his name is Joel. Yeah, he's he's like the god. Yeah. Of it, right? And and that's the idea. He's uh I said we have a we have a lot of systems built up in the game where the game master has a lot of control over the play experience. It's something that we're continuously evolving based on what's happening in the game. And as part of the roadmap, there are things that we want to keep secret because we want to surprise and delight. Now <laughs> he's talked about talked about apparently in this game people have been like they're gr they're gravitating to certain planets and such they're like this is the planet we must defend it and there have been times yeah, where those planets pick, you have can fallen pick the planet yeah you can pick the planet where like you want to defend and all that but it's just really funny because in this game too you can accidentally kill your teammates so most uh, of the yeah, time last me. night most of the time last night we were i was playing with maza and mike and we were in the ship ready to leave after we accomplished the mission and Ma mike would just go and shoot maza in the head and he would die and he wouldn't be extracted so he wouldn't get the points to lex level up and everything 
So just fair warning, you can accidentally Rough. kill your own teammates. Like this brute died from an accidental mine explosion. I recommend yeah. the game with friends. It's a lot of fun. I was with my team. I had no idea like the friendly fire thing was like that yeah. serious. I like chucked the grenade, everybody died. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't kill you. They're like you did. I'm like, how? Friendly mm -hmm. fire is a thing here. Yeah. Like, Oops. He said he continues on and says, We look at the individual planets as there was a planet that we made that was good fun. And we and we have uh, made them so we've made so many of them. But the community's attachment to each planet is significant. So one of the things we're looking at internally is how can we reconsider these planets to become uh, more of a character moving forward? So people have this attachment and you're going to see this old Joel, the game lord, the game master, go in and, and moving chess pieces around to where uh that planet may be destroyed and people will be mm -hmm. upset or whatever over it yeah people are going crazy for this game like they've made so many memes so many videos about it and the weird thing is that these people uh, there's some people who are like oh my god try not to be like a nazi because you know for democracy and everything like they're going way over into it and they're overthinking this like the weirdos that they are so be careful of those guys out there who be like this is not real don't be a nazi and all that stuff but yeah, play the game, guys, if you want to play the game. I finally got it working. I gave it a zero before. Now I give it a seven and a half because I can actually play the game. Did you did you know that there's like um, <laughs> some sympathizers out there that are like they're they're upset that we're killing bugs? Yeah, they're weird. That's what I'm saying. Like, these yeah. people are weird out there, man. Yeah. <laughs> you mean Just someone like... on the internet was upset about something? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh I, I don't mind people being upset at stuff, but when you're like, it's a video game and you kill bugs. And you're like, we shouldn't be playing that because it's teaching our kids to go out and step on bugs. Man, uh, what a world we live in, huh? Mm -hmm. Tell you what, 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 do you, what do you say about that? What a world we live in. Um, a certainly of Strife says, indie games are showing how major studios are failing lately. I recommend Legendary Drops, YouTuber. He covers how indie games are a wake-up call, like Helldivers. Thanks, Sturdy Abstract. Greatly appreciate your support. Game is fun, though. Um, let's move on to something that everybody can relate to, and um, that would be boobs. Have you seen something? Some huge boobies. I like your take on boobies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there's, there's more boobies, I think. Of course we do. We have <laughs> titties. All right. Vote for me is a vote for boobs. Mm. There we go. <laughs> Any more to share with uh, with Jay? Ah. Uh, Jay? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. All right. <laughs> so That's what I'll be famous for. <laughs> I'm okay with single it. Single stare. I love it. Yeah. Let's go over here to the Soprano star, Drea De Mario, has joined OnlyFans after her acting career stalled and has raised so much money from only fans. She has saved her house from foreclosure. Uh, did you ever see Jeez. the Sopranos Jay? One of my favorite shows of all time. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And she was, she's a smoke show in that show. So there's no doubt about it. Well, now you can pay for her <laughs> only fans. It says only fans saved my life. 100%. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it really did save us. Anyone who wants to condemn me and put me down, go for it. I just hope you never find yourself in a position I was in taking care of two little kids. I saved my home for home of many years, and that was what was important to us. Hey, this is, I, you know, I was reading through this just now, and in the back of my mind, this is more than just like whore acceptance that we're seeing in society, <laughs> where it's like, hey, it's okay to take off your clothes for all this nonsense and uh, get paid for it. I don't know. Labs, what are you, what's your thoughts on uh, Drea D'Amato being an OnlyFans star now? She, I mean, listen, she can do whatever she want, but uh, you a hoe. I'm just saying it out like that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> As somebody who is a, uh, a fan of Sopranos, Jay, does it hurt your heart to see Drea D'Amato doing OnlyFans? Or are you drastically Googling her OnlyFans right now? <laughs> <laughs> subscribe no i i i feel bad like i i i feel bad for for women that think that that's the only option that they have that's all if you if you if you just want to go out and do it 
then like you said, you're an adult, that's your choice. But if you're like, I can only be naked to save my house. Like that's, that sucks. You know, like, like if, if you feel like that's your only option, that's, uh, that, that really sucks. And it, it just shows the kind of world that we live in. So I don't know her whole, but according to that, she just said it saved her life. So but if she felt like that was, whole, did you say? That's sorry, I, I don't know her like that. I'm just saying like, if, if, if like, if, if that's the the route she had to take to like say what did she say save her children or something yeah. like that it's so, um, well yeah. i am uh what did i say I, about I, the hole i was trying to said, like i don't know her hole and i don't know her I whole think story you want to say whole story but you yeah. just i don't know her yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i meant to say i don't know her whole story <laughs> oh no <laughs> i'm that's uh, crazy I'm though because like I, not for nothing she's famous there is a Sopranos fan base. Like I've gone to these comic cons where there are people there that, you know, haven't been acting for years and, and they were just in smaller shows. Heck man, my booth right next to Gina in Vancouver was with Dora, the, the original voice to Dora, the Explorer. And she had people line up, you know, I, I, there might've been other ways to save money, but may, make money. But maybe she felt like yeah, she's she's living a million dollar lifestyle and she ain't making millions anymore. So it's like this is the only way, um, you know, so again, she's an adult and she can do whatever she wants. But for if for other women out there that are like, this is the only way I can survive. It's like that's that's terrifying for for them to think that way. So. I'm uh, I'm curious. It's uh, she launched. OK, I'm just doing a little dig in here. She launched her it in uh, August for 15 bucks a month. And she's made enough money to save her house, so she has fifteen dollars a month to see her uh, to see her butthole, pretty much. <laughs> so, um, yeah, hey, you're an, you're an adult. You can do what you want. Congratulations. It doesn't mean I can't laugh at you and say uh, that sucks. So sucks for yeah. you. sucks for our kids more than anything because those pictures are going to be on the internet forever. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're going to so, get teased and everything when they're in school. I know you. Oh. They don't. They don't think about that. That's the that's the thing. So Extra I don't know. Zero came like, in she's famous. It's like there's got to be like she doesn't have to act again. There's a lot of things that she can do. You know. Yeah. Anyway, like yeah. Home Depot or something. You can literally work anywhere. McDonald's, something. Sopornos, you see, see what he did there. Extra zero. Thank you very much, Sopornos. That's good. All right. Uh, let's see. We got anything? Oh yes, we do. We got one more. One more little thing here. This is pretty interesting. This is from the Phoenix Press over on Twitter. It says so. Apparently, Walmart is releasing a new three movie Ghostbusters collection ahead of Frozen Empire. Yep, you heard it right. Only three movies. Nature is healing. That's obviously a reference to uh, the female led Ghostbusters not being included in that. Jay, are you a big Ghostbusters guy? Uh yeah, I like it. I liked it. I liked the second one too. It didn't get a lot of love, but I enjoyed it. I also loved the uh, the real Ghostbusters cartoon. I thought that was really good. Oh, let's go back in the day. So let's go. So yeah, I'm good with it. Okay, okay, sounds good. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm currently looking at the Metal Gear Rising. Uh, the only thing I know for real from Tomok, who came in earlier. I got to read. I got to sing that in just a little bit. Do we have any memes today, Blabs? Um, we do, but I gotta hit the locals tips that we got. So, Fire um, away. Mojo16 sent a dollar and says, Are there any events going on in Oregon that side scrollers and geeks and gamers would be interested in this year? I would love to meet you guys. No homo. Um, Not that <laughs> I know of. No. Yeah, ah. n nothing going on up there. And uh, then he I'm... followed up with three bites and the cheese out wasn't great. Still decent, though. Well, yeah. well now we know. Yeah. Um. Well, at least maybe maybe I'll do that tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. Is that it? Yeah, on the vocals, yes. I want to cool. pull up some memes for you, unless you'd like to sing. That's up to you. No, no, I'm 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 listening to it right now. I want to make sure I get it. Uh, okay. Make sure I'm hearing it because this is and definitely I a damn ass. Pull up some memes. All right, let's see. Start. Wow, we got a lot of memes today. Okay, so the first one is. Craig really wants Drunk Threepa to be his personal Santa. Come on, Craig, it's almost March. <laughs> it might be my sweaty ears, but that didn't sound like ho, ho, ho. This is more entertaining than being stuck in Hell Divers 2 <laughs> Which is true, I was stuck for hours. Let's put a smile on that oh face. Oh my Whee! goodness. <laughs> Jeremiah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are great. Popcorn Bucket Seniors. 
Is that Garrett just back there? Like, yeah, it's just random. <laughs> <laughs> then we have, um, would Blouse be interested in this popcorn bucket? Ooh. So that doesn't exist, but I would 100% be it, because that's beautiful. Hayden, do you like sand? No, it gives me sweaty ear. <laughs> Um, whoosh, powered ear cleaner, starting Craig, official mm. spokesman for sweaty ass sweaty ears. Ear. I don't, I don't there like go. this, this theme of sweaty ass ears. That's disgusting. <laughs> Look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> cool. there, there, there's the big pickle. There it is. And this is us in the office. <laughs> so I think that is all of our memes for today. So That's pretty you, good. Memers. That's pretty good. Yeah. The memers come in clutch every day. They, they gave us good stuff. Big time. Hey, a orangutan came in. Uh, came in and says, "I worked for GoDaddy and I lived in Austin. Great view, fun, fun coworkers, but still the most soul sucking job I've ever had." Yes, mm. gig 'em, gig 'em. Let's go. Thanks, orangutan. Appreciate that. Uh, and uh, sorry to hear about that, man. Go, go find something you love. Go get it. Go get it. Yeah. Uh, the worthy one says, "Hey, Jay. Sometimes people like guys uh, just turning on a camera and talk more than a big production team behind them. That's the reason why you guys are what's popping right now, and G four is gone." I hear that. I hear that, man. I hear you loud and clear. Try, try to meld meld the two. We want to have a, a decent production value, but not great. I, I wish I could have a sweet background like you, though. I look at that, and I'm envious. What do you mean? You got I colors. Mean, like, it's really... My background is like... <laughs> <my arcade. laughs> I love it. I, know. I love it. It looks good, though. I'm just saying, it looks good. Pretty sweet. <laughs> Uh, certainly I'll try to some uh, rearranging. From, so <laughs> message from super earth. We failed to hold off the evil, uh, automaton force, new bug threats on the planet. Veld where we have to contain them back to your normal program. I'm guessing that's a reference to hell divers. It's true. And you know what? I didn't even like meet the bugs until like almost three hours into streaming. I was playing the hardcore stuff with like the guys. They're like, here, go into this first. So I survived. So, you know, if I can do it, Blake wants to know when is Blabs going to e thought watch The Sopranos Lady? Oh, well, I don't do OnlyFans on that though, because it's only on Kick, you know? Like, I just watch the Kick streamers. I haven't done e thought watch in like three, four months. And Mega Man came in, says, Great show, guys. Jay, will you be at GalaxyCon Richmond with Gina? Yeah, that's right. I will be. And that is uh, May. 17th and 18th i will be let's come say hi say cool. hi say Congratulations. hi excellent all right i got a song to sing and i'm ready to sing it and by ready to sing it i mean we'll see i'm gonna try to play this this is uh the only thing i know for real sung by dan vask and i don't i don't think we're gonna get flagged for this so i'm gonna just let it play real quick just so you have an idea of what it's supposed to sound like before i sing it does that sound good and then i'll sing it okay so here we go it's gonna be horrible is this supposed to be sound Do we just do we not say uh, it? This is really great, Craig. It's a banger. <laughs> Listen, you can talk to Tomok about the song selection here. All right, you know, Tomok. We don't hear, we hear any, anything. We don't hear anything. I you asked you. I was like, "Is there supposed to be sound?" No you didn't sound answer playing. me. You did a J. Oh, you didn't hear it. You can't hear it at all. No, this is nope. literally us right now. Where is it? Where is it? Really? Yeah, this is us. I'm over here. Really. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not see? I, I hear it on mine. That's, that's oh, weird. good. Maybe uh, we didn't share audio. <laughs> no, I did. I did. I always do. Wait, so you're telling me you can't hear this? No. Nope. What? You can't hear that? I no. don't. It's not like we're messing with you, Craig. We can't actually hear Seriously, it. I can't hear it. What the shit? What is it? <laughs> everything's, everything is, uh, is perfect on this, except for that. All right. Well, that really sucks. <laughs> Tomok, I, oh, how, how are we going to share this? I know, I know, Sing I know. It, I know bro. No, no, no. You need to hear it because it's pretty fucking hardcore. Hold on, I got it. I, I know. Do you want me to here. share mine? No, because then it's gonna be off. I'm, I'm gonna be like two seconds behind, and that's gonna make it sound <gasps> even worse. Drama. <laughs> hey, Dave and Foley loves this so much. They became a brand new member. <laughs> Look at that. That's awesome. Thank you. 
Thanks so much, Dave and Foley. Appreciate that. All right, I, I have a solution. I have a solution. I'm He's thinking trying quick a different on browser. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not even going to go to another browser. I downloaded the song. I downloaded it, and we're gonna we're gonna bring it up. All right. Oh God. This is, uh, it's important. See, important and Jay thought we were high production quality over here. Like, come on, man. <laughs> mm -mm. Nope. Here we go. Now you understand. Yeah, this is some hardcore shit. Here we are. Just, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I do it for the people, man. <laughs> Here we go. Here it is. All right, so I'm gonna get oh, through gosh. the first first couple lines of that. That's a lot. <laughs> All right, and I'm supposed to sound like Dan Vask. Good luck. I can't do this. Um, yeah, just everyone, just get out of here. It's ridiculous. Uh, Jay, welcome to our show. All right. <laughs> Told my ho horrible, horrible decision here. Ready? Here we go. Uh, this is me singing the only thing I know for real as Dan Vask. God, this is gonna suck. <laughs> That was that was pretty embarrassing, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't uninstall if I were you. I did my best. <laughs> What do you want? I'm not a singer. I'm certainly not Dan Vass caliber. And oh, it was wow. so bad that like you weren't even like the audio wasn't even coming through. You were yelling so much. It was like, bah! <laughs> bah! Bah! Oh no, I'm getting pelted. Oh no, no. There, go, there goes the tomatoes. All right. Yeesh. Before Look, you go, I put a what? poll in the chat saying, should Jay play Pirate Lego Pirates of the Caribbean? 76% of the chat said yes, Jay. What game? Like Lego parts of the oh Caribbean. Lego. Where can I get that? Is that Steam? Um, can I get that on Steam? I think you can. Yeah, I played it on the Wii back in the day, and it was pretty fun. I'm not gonna I lie. Think I, I think I would love that. I think I would love it. Yeah, I've never I think done you'll that have before. a lot of fun with it. I'm down. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry, I tried to sing. Right? Apparently, it was too far away. But uh, listen, it was bad. It was bad. Just let you know that. All right. <laughs> look, we we put a link in the chat. We're gonna put it in there a few more times. Everybody, head over to the high. T channel, uh, the high T show over on the drunk 3PO channel right now. Look at it. Wait, hold, on. Up. hold on. Can you share my screen? <laughs> oh, wait, this one. People in the chat are like, can you tell Craig to hurry up? Dear God. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Easy nap. Just relax. Oh, no. CEO throwing. Pe oh, there. All right. Thank you so much, CEO. All right. Let's get out of here. Let's go, everybody. Head over there. Hey, thanks, thanks for inviting me, man. I really appreciate it. I love you, buddy. I love you. I do. No homo. I, I love it. Straight up, man. Uh, love you. I, I love everything about you. I, I, I love your love your demeanor. I love your heart. Uh, we, got, we got a Wizard of Oz thing going on over here. Whereas I got the eyes, Blabs has a smile, and you have the heart. Straight up, which is wonderful. I'm a scarecrow. Uh, everyone, thanks. Hollow inside. <laughs> Head on over and uh, subscribe to the Drunk 3PO channel, guys. Uh, look, listen, and even, what is your pirate channel name? History of Pirates. Easy enough. Head over to History yeah. of Pirates oh, channel yeah, as well. That's, we have a lot of fun over there. All right. Get out of here, guys. Uh, go go over to the channel. Link is in there. Uh, thank appreciate you. you Jay, thank you very much. Bob, thank you very much, guys. People gonna try to keep you down. Don't let them. You guys got a goal. Go get it. That's right. Don't. See you guys later. Bye bye. Fatality.